Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over how to deploy a Docker image to a cloud environment. So you created this really amazing web app, you containerized it, you got this Docker image, now what do you do? So I'm going to show you how to use a service called AWS Light Sale and for about $3.50 a month you go ahead and get started deploying your containerized image and running that containerized workload in a cloud environment really easy, really cheap, without having to deal with any of the complicated container uh, orchestration platforms out there. So go ahead and keep watching and I'll show you step by step how to get started. Now the first thing you want to do is go ahead and install Docker. If you haven't already installed the Docker desktop product and you want to follow along with this tutorial, so it's really easy. Just go to docker.com, click on products, then Docker desktop. And then it will give you the option to download um, the correct installer based on your OS. So it supports Mac, Windows, and Linux distributions. So by default, it will present you with the, hopefully the correct version to download of Docker Desktop. And this is really the most popular thing to containerize an application. Now I'm going to go ahead and create, open up my terminal. And I'm using a Mac terminal, but you could use a Windows command line that also works. I'm going to make a folder. And I'm just, this is just going to store my Docker file and any um, documents or um, files I need for my image. So I'm going to call it LightSail. I'm going to go into my LightSail folder. And now I'm just going to create a file. You could do this in Windows with your File Explorer or even in Mac in your um, Finders. Create a folder and then you can create a file. I'm using VI, but again, you could use something like VS Code or use even something as simple as Notepad. So I'm creating my index.html page. So because I'm creating a very basic container image running Nginx with a customized home page. So here's my basic HTML. It's nothing fancy. It's just a hello world. Now I'm going to create my Docker file. So I'm going to do a VI. And again, you can use VS Code to do this. You don't have to use VI. So I use Docker file. And I'm going to put in just a couple lines here. It's really straightforward. And it's just going to say Nginx latest version. I'm going to copy that index.html file I created. I'm going to put it into the default web directory HTML folder for Nginx. So that's my Docker file. Super straightforward. Then I can create a Docker image. So I'm going to do a Docker build. I'm going to give it a tag demo web server. And the dot means present working directory. So saying look in the folder that I'm this command line is currently in. So again, if you're doing this on a Mac, you'll do it like I did. I'm in the folder, the light sail folder. But if you're doing this on Windows, make sure you CD into the folder that you created your Docker file in. Now, once it's gone through and downloaded all the prerequisites for to create the Docker image, I could go ahead and test it out on my local computer and make sure it runs my simple web server with my customized page. I'm going to do a Docker run. I'm going to specify a port. So it's my local host port and my image container port. I'm going to give it a name, web. And then I'm going to call the Docker image I just created. So Docker web server. So now if you open up a browser, go to localhost, which means the computer I'm on, and go to port 8080, that's the port I specified on my localhost, and it goes to port 80 on the container where I'm running Nginx, then this should come up for you that says hello world Nginx container. So that means everything's good, so it means our Docker image is created successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Docker tag, I'm going to tag my um, Docker image. And this, I'm going to do this because I'm going to store my image in Docker Hub and create a new repository for this image. So I have a Docker Hub account. If you don't have one, it's free. Go to Docker Hub um, website. Go ahead and create yourself one. If you're doing this yourself, then the only thing you would change is sysadmin girl. That is my username on Docker Hub. But for yourself, you can go ahead and replace sysadmin girl with whatever your username is. So I'm going to do a Docker login and I've done this before. So it already has my credentials, but if it's the first time it'll prompt you for your username and password. So then I'm going to push my image to my Docker hub repository and it's going to create a brand new one just for this image. So we're just going to wait for us to finish pushing our image 
to our Docker Hub account, the brand new repository created just for this image. And then you could go back and open up your browser and go to your Docker Hub account. And then you'll notice that you should have a brand new repository created just like I do right here for sysadmin girl with my demo web server. So once this is all ready to go, then we're able to now run it in a cloud environment. And I'm going to show you really the easiest way to run a container in a cloud environment with any of the really complicated orchestration platforms out there. They're awesome, but sometimes they're just too much and not really necessary to, if you just need to get started with just a few containers, you know, and just get started really quickly. There's really minimal learning curve in doing this. So here it is, my Docker. So I'm going to go to AWS. If you don't have an account, you can create an account. It's free. Um, you get a one year free tier. A bunch of stuff is free for the first year. So it's a great place to go learn. And cloud is really, you know, really heavily used now. So I highly recommend you take the time to learn a little bit of this if you haven't been exposed before. So here I am in my account, tons of services available. Don't worry about all these. I'm just going to show you the one we're going to use for this. There's, I mean, if you're brand new to this, it might be a little overwhelming. But really, if you go straight to LightSail, this product was made specifically to make it really, really easy for anyone to get started really quick. So it doesn't require a whole bunch of prerequisite knowledge of cloud and cloud security and cloud networking. It doesn't really require that. They kind of do handle a lot of this for you. So you could do stuff like um, running a virtual machine. They're called instances. I'm going to do a container on here, but I'm just showing you a couple of the options here. So this is how cheap it is to run actually a virtual machine or an instance. $3.50 a month. I mean, that's pretty cheap to run a server for a whole month. So really can't beat some of these pricings here. So I'm going to go back and click it. You can run databases. You can run containers. Um, they have networking options, load balancers. And they really do simplify it as opposed to using some of their other services, which are kind of a little bit more uh, of a learning curve. This one actually is just kind of straightforward for really anyone starting out. So that's why it's really nice for beginners. And if you look around, you find there's some really cool stuff that allows you to run like WordPress or Joomla just really with just a kind of a point and click kind of options. It allows you to run Windows and Linux distribution. So if you run like want to run yourself like a Windows server, you go ahead and run this on here. So I would just make sure you double check, of course, you know, the instant price as well as storage if you're going to do something like that on here. But if you scroll down a bit, you kind of see there's tons of Drupal. So a lot of great stuff you can run on here. And it's pre-configured, like a LAMP server, Nginx, really easy to start launching an instance with services pre-installed and configured. And you could just kind of upload your website. So to actually get to the option for containers, I'm going to click on the home button on the top there. And once you get there, it'll give you the options for instances, containers, database, networking, storage, and snapshots. So I'm going to go ahead and click on container. And I'm going to say, um, create a container service. So right now I have no containers running, so it's showing me kind of this welcome screen. So I'm going to go ahead and create my first container workload in AWS. So here's the pricing breakdown for a container. So this is, and it also scales, and it puts a load balancer in front of our containers automatically, so there's no additional step with working with load balancers or networking. So you kind of choose um, your power. So how much memory, how much virtual CPUs do you want on your container? So the container service capacity. Now, depending on how much you want to spend, of course, you could change it. And depending on how many containers you want to run. So if you're just starting out, you can maybe run one nano, just testing out if you're developing something, you want to see how it performs. If you're running something, of course, in production, maybe you want to run something with a little bit more um, processing power and memory. And as you change these, it also changes kind of like the networking bandwidth. So, And then it tells you how much to expect pricing and how much data transfer is included in this pricing. And then if you go over that amount of data, of course, there's an additional fee for that. So it does break it down for you here. So I'm going to go and select my compute capacity. I chose something simple to just get started. And now I'm going to name my service. I'm going to identify my service. I'm going to name it just demo web server just to be consistent. It shows my summary. I chose three micro containers. So that includes one gig of memory and point. 25 
virtual CPUs and I'm running three nodes. So that's going to run three containers across three different essentially EC2 instances. Once it starts um, deploying our service, it's going to be in a pending state. So we want to wait for that to become ready. So while it's, you know, it's pending, let's go through and look at some of the options here. It's going to give us next. The next thing it's going to want is your container image. And we just created one on our laptop, right? With our nice, simple Nginx with our, you know, customized index.html homepage and use Docker Hub in our example. So we're using the public registry, but there is an option where you can use my local machine and you can push it to AWS ECR service, Elastic Container Registry service. And then if you click on my local machine, it does provide instructions to do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the one we created and push to Docker Hub. So now I could just go to that next tab and say where it says deploy and we could just specify how it can get access to that Docker image. So here are the instructions for my local machine, and you kind of could go through and read that. But I'm going to click on a public registry. I'm going to click on deployment on the top there. I'm going to say create my first deployment, and I'm just going to give her a container name and then my image, right? So this is going to enter in the image reference from the public registry. So my container name, I'm just going to call it Docker Web Server, like I have been this whole time. Remember, it's my. It's gonna be your username slash, and then um, your image name. And I'm gonna do the latest version. Now I'm here. I have my image, and I, if I go back to Docker Hub, I can make sure the tag is correct, the repository name is correct, and everything. Now configuration is optional. That really depends on your container. Mine doesn't need it, so I'm gonna leave it blank. Then you go ahead and add port, and if you want to make it public. So my website, I'm choosing to make this a public website. Anyone can access um, my what, Nginx server to view my homepage. So I'm going to want this run on port 80, and then I'm going to open up to the public. Now, it's nice that it will automatically redirect all HTTP traffic to HTTPS traffic so you know that your um, web server is being encrypt securely accessed with an encryption, encrypted connection. So here I selected my container image. It says port health tech is slash. That's the URL slash of the website. And it's just making sure the health check is making sure that the container is running and it's um, loading a web page on slash of your URL. And if it's not, it'll relaunch a container for you. So that's it. I could save and deploy, super easy. And then it says pending, just give it a couple minutes. And then it'll give us a um, domain name, a URL to access our um, container workload. And this is going to be publicly accessible behind a load balancer that's automatically created for us. Now that it's ready, we can go ahead and open up our public domain and see our container workload running and publicly accessible. So if you later on you change your mind, you could always go back and modify how many containers you're running. You know, if you want to change the capacity, so let's say you don't want micro anymore, you could go in here and change this. So it's really easy to configure and it will automatically, you know, redeploy your container images and your container workloads for you. You can do custom domains and create your own certificates as well. Plus, if you want to troubleshoot any performance issues, there are metrics information you can look at and you can kind of see kind of this average CPU utilization per minute. And there's additional options. You click on the pull down menu there. So if you want to check memory utilization, then you can determine if you maybe need to scale in or scale out your current deployment. If you want to change port information or change the version, that's easy as well. If you update your container image, you can go in here and select a different version of the image you have in your Docker Hub uh, repository. And it's very easy, as much as easy as clicking an option and just changing a single field. So you can click here on modify, change your image reference from latest to maybe like version two and go ahead and save and it will start deploying. When it deploys, it actually does keep the previous version active for a while in case you need to roll back. So here we are, super easy to get your container up and running, really cheap. 
in a cloud environment. Say you want to go ahead and maybe completely change your environment and put a whole new container image and take down the old one. Let's say you're doing some testing. It's really easy to go in disable it or deploy it. If you disable it, you are still, I believe, getting billed for it. So you don't necessarily want to disable it. You want to delete it if you don't think you're going to go back. And it's easiest selecting those three dots and say, yes, I want to delete. Again, you can disable if you don't want anyone access your website, but you want to make sure if you're not getting billed, you're going to want to delete it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye.